All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, once again, God bless you for joining me here in the studio. Uh, we bless God for yet another blessed day that he has graced us with. And um, for the music students, um, because of the lesson, I mean, you know, mean to me and Casa would treat you. A drew maybe a make a set tree, Musenia, Yingin, I bet yes, yeah. But um, because of lesson, I may know a lesson, a comma, and in the public brewery in Tiosa Mikasa or Brofum, Senia, Ubi Abet Yasia. So, um, if you are listening to me live in the studio once again, God bless you so much, um, for joining me today. I'm going to show you the entire screen for this lesson. Um, and we are going to be able to get the best out of everything that we are going to do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show you every single screen, every single screen. That way you can get um, everything that we'll be, we'll be dealing with here. Okay? Um, just bear with me. Um, bear with me real quick. Um, today we are going to be learning through the door called Logic. Okay? And we are going to talk about some music technologies that some of you guys may not be aware about. Um, so just bear with me. All right. So first things first, um, somebody will ask. First things first, somebody will ask. Um, Sir, I would like to learn how to make beats. I would like to have my own studio. I would like to be able to make my own songs. Um, I would like to be able to record my voice. I would like to be able to make records. If you are that kind of person who have these kind of questions, then you want to stick around for the next hour or two as we dive into this lesson. Um, this is an introductory, and I'm really, really going to go deep. This is not going to be like... Um, uh, one of the quick ones. This is going to be an in-depth explanation of certain things that you need to know. All right, so first things first, somebody will ask, uh, before I can even do this, sir, what do I need? Okay, for a beginning level, the basic things that you need is you need something that is called a MIDI controller. If you are somebody who want to make beats, you need something called a MIDI controller or a regular keyboard which is what you see me, me having here, okay? This is called a regular keyboard or a MIDI controller. Right now, I'm using a MIDI controller, okay? And what I'm using is called KeyLab, okay? You can use whatever you want. So first things first is you need a MIDI controller. Now, after the MIDI controller, of course, you need a connect, um, the connectors to, to be able to connect it to whatever you need to connect it to, okay? Besides that, what else do you need? You need a laptop. You guys are not going to be able to see my main screen here. I have a lot of screen, a lot of setup on this side that you, are, you guys are not able to see. But, um, you know, you, of course, you need a laptop to be able to, um, you know, send information and stuff like that. All right. Besides the laptop, what else do you need? You need something called um, a MIDI interface. I told you guys today, you guys are going to love me. And so, I'm going to make you guys love me. All right? So, I'm going to show you my whole screen. All right? It looks weird. Don't worry. I'm going to show you my whole screen. What we're going to do is we're going to go to, let's say, Google. And we are going to type in MIDI interface. All right? So, this is what a MIDI interface looks like. All right, so you guys are able to see this thing, MIDI Plus here. That is a MIDI interface, okay? All these are all called MIDI interface, okay? To cut things to the chase, I'm going to show you some of the ones I recommend, okay? So one of the good ones is Chrisonas MIDI interface, which looks like this here. Audio box, very good to use, okay? All right, that is a very good one to use, Chrisonas. Um, audio MIDI interface, all right? So if you want that, go for that. Now, you might want something close to what I personally like to use. Mine is called Scarlett or Focusrite. 
So if you type in Scarlet or Focus Right, it will come up. All right, and a lot of people use these ones. This is personally what I like to use besides my mixer. Now with the Scarlets, they have different generation, um, different generations. All right, this is a um, two i two. Oh, this one is a two i four. So um, I have the two i two that I like to use for simple stuff. So let me show you the two i two. Okay, it looks just like this. All right, it has one input here that gives you um, maybe your, your your microphone and it has another input that may give you a keyboard or a guitar or whatever you may need it for okay so that is the first two few things that you need we talked about midi keyboard now let's talk about the midi keyboards actually real quick see midi controllers somebody will ask what is the difference between a midi controller and um, uh, um, a regular keyboard okay so watch this a MIDI controller looks like this, all right? You guys can realize from what I'm looking at is the M audio, okay? The M audio, you can see it has all these knobs and controls on it, okay? So pay attention to what I'm showing you right now. You see knobs and controls, and you see keyboards, okay? Knobs, controls, keyboards, and then clicks, okay? And of course, you have the pitch wheel and then the mod wheel, okay? So. You, you guys see how uh, a MIDI controller looks like? This is an another, another example, same, similar stuff, okay? This is another example, same, similar stuff, okay? So now let's look at a regular keyboard, a portable keyboard. And tell me the difference between what you see, between a, a portable keyboard and what you just saw right now, okay? So let's look at maybe this one. No, let me get something that looks straight up so you can really understand the point that I'm trying to say. So let's say, um, yeah, let's look at this one, Casio. All right, so looking at the Casio, okay, looking at the Casio, let's make it big. Okay, tap to zoom, come on, zoom in. All right, cool. So looking at the Casio, what do you see? You see clicky, cl clickable stuff, okay? Of course, you see a screen. The only thing you kind of don't see is you don't really see knobs. So you see clickable stuff and controls, and of course you see a keyboard. But what else do you see? Look at what you see. You see a library of things. At the same time, you see something black here. Guess what that is? It's called built-in speakers. Built-in speakers. And then guess what? The far right, another built-in speakers. So the difference we are seeing between a regular keyboard is we see that... Uh, you know, the regular keyboard has the same stuff the MIDI controller has, but it has built-in library or sound module, okay, all these stuff, and then the, um, what is it, the, the MIDI controller don't have those, okay? So now, let's break it down. So the point is, a MIDI controller cannot play out sounds. It can take, it can control information. So for instance, I... I send it to something, then I use it to control. The same way you con connect your controller to a game, like uh, a video game, and then start playing, um, like this controller here, okay, and start playing, okay. You see how this controller, a lot of you guys like to use it for PS3 and stuff, like PS4 and stuff like that. Okay, same thing, how you use a controller to control, that is exactly what a MIDI controller is. You use it to control something. This controller is sending, um, is controlling some information in a system, okay? Same way a MIDI controller does that, okay? So you have the option to use that or use a regular keyboard. The only exception is if you're using a regular keyboard, the regular keyboard will be able to play sounds out, okay? So those are the basic things for you to understand. So first things we are learning is we need a keyboard or a MIDI controller. We need a, um, a laptop okay somewhere to send our information then of course we need the midi um, interface which we talked about let's see if we saw that all right the midi interface let me try and go back okay good see these are called midi interfaces okay and then of course you see on um, that now midi interface let's talk a little bit about that so midi interface one of the things you're going to realize is this you are realizing that a lot of these have a few channels somebody might be like man i thought i needed a mixer well, I'm going to explain that real quick. So, 
with a media interface, you realize a lot of these have two channels, okay? A lot of these have two channels. A lot of these have two channels, okay? But guess what? If you needed more than two channels, or uh, um, two channels, and you needed maybe, let's say, eight channels, you can get those, okay? Watch. You get big ones that can take a lot of channels. Some can take 25, 16, all that. So your, the point is you will get it based on your needs, based on your needs. These are able to take different types of um, inputs, okay? So if you need more channels, guess what? Go for more. However, more for the most time, a lot of people are not going to be using data channels, unless if you have li live drumming or live drum tracking or something like that. So most times, the two is going to be your best friend if you are just beginning. As you guys can see in somebody's studio, they have this right here, okay? Don't go for fanciness. Go for what works best for you, okay? All right? So that's the point that I wanted to make with the MIDI, MIDI um, um, interfaces, all right? This, these are audio MIDI interfaces. You can um, get two channels or more channels depending on what you need. Get it for your need. Do not get... Um, a big one just because you want to look fancy. Oh, look at those cool bars. No, it's not going to do you any good. One thing about sound engineering is the fact that you are able to, um, the fact that you are able to make beats or, or you think somebody has a big studio and a big equipment and big mixes does not make them a good engineer. Somebody can do little with a phone. Oh, sorry. Somebody can do a lot with little. Somebody can do a lot with just a mobile phone. Somebody can do a lot with just an iPad. I have witnessed it before. And so don't really bite on the fact that you need big ears. You don't. Okay? So, of course, you need a MIDI interface. Now, somebody will ask, what if I want to use a mixer? Do I still need a MIDI interface? Well, guess what? Now we are in the digital world. And a lot of mixers are digital. So guess what? They have built-in MIDI interfaces, all right? So let's look at a, a few mixes. Here are some popular mixes a lot of people like to use. X32 Behringer, okay? Now, you're looking at X32 Behringer, okay? And let's see what we see on it, all right? On the board, we see it has a screen, and of course, it has millions of things that we don't understand, right? So the point is, if you're using a digital mixer, you already have everything that you need. You don't need to go for a MIDI interface, okay? So X32 Behringer is one of the common ones a lot of people like to use, all right? Now, um, personally, I use Personas, okay? So some people also like to use Personas. Um, Personas has different mixers. Let me type in mixers so I can show you the different kinds, okay? So this is the kind that I use here, as you guys can see. Um, Personas has larger mixers some people like to use larger mixers it has um the um, um the um the um the the the, the six four s series okay um let's see all right these are all personas mixers so the point is yes you can use a mixer if you prefer or you can use a midi interface so the point is don't use a mixer and use a midi interface Use a mixer if that's the route you want to go or use a MIDI interface if that's the route you want to go. Now, the question is, sir, can I have both? Yes, you can. You can have both. For instance, I have my personas right here, okay? And then at the same time, I have my MIDI interface back there, all right, which is my 2i2 focus, right? Now, why may I use certain go one way versus the other. For instance, if I'm recording vocals, for instance, I have an artist who, uh, my artists come here to record their, their music and some, um, you know, doing the vocal session. Sometimes I just need dry vocals. So guess what? I would just be like, all right, let me just use my MIDI interface. Because why? I need only one input. I need only one input. So therefore, I would just say, all right, let me just use that, okay? Somebody may say, all right, I want to do a live recording. I need about a guitar, a bass guitarist, this, 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 and it's a lot. So then my MIDI interface don't become useful. So in a situation of multi-tracking, okay, what is multi-tracking? Multi-tracking is saying 
you are recording multiple instruments simultaneously, okay, or at the same time, okay? So one time we are going at it, we are recording everything together. You are not going to do it like one, 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 one. No, no, no. We are going together, all right? So multi-track recording is basically that. So in this sense, um, you know, if I have all these instruments I have to record, then these big dogs are going to be my best friend, okay? This is personally the mixer I use, okay, the 16 channel one, um, because I don't need any more than that for studio operations, all right? But um, a lot of um, studios who like to stay fancy like to use these ones, okay? Um, no, no, not that. Um, some will use that, but um, these are the common ones you see in studios if they are using a Personas type. If they're using a Personas brand, yes, here. You, you see a combination of this. That is very, very common, a combination of these, which is like a 32 and a 32. There you go, to make a 64, perfect, all right? And then um, another common one you will see is this one right here, okay? So, um, you know, this is a Studio Life series. Um, um, so, anyways, um, those are basic things you need. What else do you need? You need this good friend on my ears, okay? These are called headphones. Now, headphones, let me explain something to you. You might not know the difference. So, with headphones, okay, there is something called closed back and open back. Okay, if you have a studio, professional studio headphone, the outside of it, there is, the outside of it, if there is holes, okay, holes, you see mine, this is holes. So, if it's there are holes, it's called open back. If it is closed entirely and there are no holes, it's called closed back. Look at my task cam. My task cam don't have holes. This is called closed back. Okay? Look at this. Open back. Now, let's talk about open back and closed back. So, open back is like this. If I'm recording a song and I'm, I'm all in it, guess what? If something goes outside of me, close to me, I'm going to hear it. That is called closed back. Sorry, open back. It will be able to pick up close by noises and stuff like that. Sometimes far. Okay? Now, this is besides the microphone. Okay? It will be able to pick up that. Now, closed back, it's like boom. It's so tight or it's so locked in that somebody can be saying, Kwesi, and then you are just sitting there. Kwesi, you are just sitting there. You see? But then, with this one, if somebody come and say, Kwesi, I will hear them. If somebody come and say, Stein, Kwesi, I will hear them. Okay? So, this is called open back, close back. So, understand that. Okay, what should you use for recording your vocals? Guess what? If you are recording your vocals, these are not your best friends. For me, I use it because I know how to work around it. So, to be very safe, don't use these to record your vocals. Why? If you use these to record your vocals, this is what's going to happen. While you're recording your vocals, if your knob or your headphone knob is, is turned a bit too high, guess what's happening? It's going to pick it. So that's why some of you guys will record and you'll be able to hear the song when you're editing the lead vocal or your vocal um, session. So when you're recording, you'll hear it in the background. Yes, too high. It's either if you're going to use closed um, open back turn it as low as possible, okay? Or, if you are, sorry, if you're going to use open back, turn it as low as possible. Or if you're going to use close back, you can use regular volume um, to the taste of the individual, okay? So, those are the basic things for you guys to really understand, okay? Now, I want you guys to ask any questions you guys want. I will do my best to answer anything that is related to what I'm talking about. If you have questions related to instruments, sounds, equipment ask it i'm going to look at my messages later i want to stay focused so i'm not really going to be going back and forth but over time i'll look all right so here's the deal these are the few things that you need and then your headphones okay and then guess what you are ready to go now there's another thing you're going to need that is if you want to really take it to the next step or get the best out of it it's called studio monitors now look at this I didn't say um, live speakers or anything like that, okay? I didn't say any of these big dogs. I'm not talking about these big dogs, okay? I'm not talking about these big dogs. So, 
pay attention to the word that I'm using. The word I'm using is studio monitors. Okay? And guess what? They all come up. Look at this group here. All kinds of studio monitors. You got it on KRK. Um, you got these. You got JBLs. All kinds of brands. Okay? So that's what I mean by studio monitors. How many do you need? Preferably, you should use at least bare minimum two. For me, I use five. Two of um, what are these even called? I, I forgot what these are called, but these um white ones right here. These these are the ones I use. I forgot the name. Yes, the Yamaha H um HSA. That's what I use. Okay, I use two of the regular speakers. Then I use a sub of that to get my bass. Then, of course, I use JBLs. If you guys know anything about JBLs, they are powerful machines, okay? How do JBLs look like? Um, let's see. Let me type it in quick so we can see, see it quick. All right. JBLs look like these, okay? That's how they look, all right? So that's um, the other speaker that I use. But mine is huge. It's not the small ones, all right? So you need those. Now, what are some monitors that I will recommend to somebody starting? Let me go ahead and give you my tops, my top favorites. Let's start with a KRK, okay? A lot of people are going to see these yellow-looking speakers in yellow-looking speakers in a lot of studios, okay? Now, if you're using KRKs, all right, that means you probably like a lot of bass, a lot of bass, okay? These are called KRK rockets, okay? Now. Um, um, let's see, let me see some big pictures. Yeah, so if you're using these speakers, that means you love bass, okay? You love bass, all right? Guess what the speakers are going to do for you? It's going to give you a lot of bass. When you're using these speakers, you don't really need a subwoofer. All you need is have fun mixing, all right? So a lot of people use these as, um, and number one, I see these more in a lot of studios than anything, all right? So KRKs is my preferred um, monitors. If you're a beginner and you want to get the best out of the monitors, go for the KRK. If you are somebody like me who says, man, I'm looking more for dynamics. I don't want the bass to deceive my ears. And I want to go for something that will help me with mixing. Then you go for my choice. All right. So, of course, they have uh, SH10 and all that. So you go for these ones, okay? which is a Yamaha HS8 or above or whatever whatever you want to do, okay? These are what I use, okay? Now, with these, what is the difference between these and the KRKs? The KRKs is going to give you a big base, okay? These are going to cut a lot of the lows, and you're going to get a lot of mid-ranges and, and stuff like that, okay? So if you go for this, um, you're going to get a lot of mid-range and normal type of volume. So that's why I would add... A sub that looks like this guy right here, okay? The subs help me. The sub looks exactly like that, okay? I add a sub so that way it helps me to get a balanced sound um, so I don't depend on the bass so much. So that's why I use these because I want to get very good mixing. That's why I use these. I'm not trying to tell you that you can get good mixing with KRKs. You will. I'm just saying by preference, I like these guys if, I, if you don't want to get your ears deceived, okay? Um, just like you see this guy have here, all right? So I don't want to have my ears deceived with bass. So that's why I would go that. So then let me talk about one more that I think is very good. Everybody who is into music knows JBLs cannot be messed with. JBLs have been good and reliable um, resource for over years, ages, 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 from their big speakers to everything. JBL has been a big brand for ages, okay? So if you are somebody like um, somebody who wants to go for the Yamaha, um, Yamaha type, um, um, but you don't have the, f the resources or whatever, and you want to go for something a little bit slightly affordable, go for the JBLs, okay? JBLs will not lie to you. They are going to be good. Guess what? They were my favorite monitors until they kind of blew up in a way. So then I was like, you know what, let me go get these, um, pick up these um, Yamahas, okay? So I will say, you know, do JBL if um, you are comfortable with it, okay? 
JBS will not lie to you, okay? JBS will do a very good job for you, okay? I think they have those in white too, okay? So go for go for JBLs, okay? If that is um, your preferred method of uh, monitors, okay? So the question becomes, Minister Stein, so are these your top favorites in order of preferred, um, what you prefer for people? Yes, yes. Um, for the um, Yamaha, like I told you, that is my personal favorite. But I will say, if you are beginning, KRK is number one. I would say personally on the market based on what I've observed, meaning the number one monitor that I see used a lot, okay, is the KRKs. All right, this is not just for this year or last year. I'm talking about over the course of years. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So KRKs is your best friend if you need ideas on how to jumpstart, okay? So KRKs. Then it comes to JBL. Then it comes to, uh, sorry, then it comes to the, um, the Yamaha um, HS8. Then it comes to JBL, any of the JBL monitors, okay? So here's the deal. This is the order that I will give to somebody who's just starting, okay? If you need ev something with everything in it, go for the KRK, okay? Because you're going to get the base, the mid-range, everything. You're going to love it. You're not going to hate it, okay? Everything will be perfect. If you need something that will give you a little bit of dynamic and not so much of base so you can really concentrate on your mix, then you go for the Yamaha's, um, the, the, the Yamaha's um, H, um, HS8, okay? If you need something that is kind of like the KRK, but a bit more flatter, JBL, okay, will do the job for you. JBL will not disappoint you, okay? So these are the order I'll give to a beginner or somebody who just want to step their foot into the field and learn about these uh, monitors or whatever the case is. Now, what about the expert who just need the best answer to what is the best way to go? Personally, I will flip it around with the Yamaha HS8 as the preferred method. Look at some of the best engineer studios, and I'm I'm gonna guarantee you you're gonna see these um set of uh, monitors. Okay, these monitors are not a joke. They get the job done. Okay, so if you want to flip it around to somebody who's very serious, want to get into it, I'm not saying you're limited to this. There are good ones out there, but this is just Stein's top three that he's talking about. Okay, so. Number one would be the Yamaha HS8, okay? And that would be these guys right here, these cats right here. Of course, I would advise you to add the sub, okay? Add the sub, which is sold separately, okay? Add the sub for a little bit more bass whenever you need to work on a song with a lot of bass, especially African music and Ghanaian music. They depend on a lot of bass, okay? A lot of bass, okay? So... Yamaha SHS powered, yep, that's it, okay? All right, so don't play with these cats. They get the job done. If I'm to play some music live for you to hear it without my connection, you will love it, okay? So preferred for the pros, okay, or the advanced guys, go for the Yamaha HS8 as your, your, first, um, your first option. Your second option, I would say go for the KRK. There's, there's a reason why I'm not putting JBL before KRK because KRK, you cannot you can never beat it, okay? I only stay away from KRK because of uh, my research on how, uh, my research and personal experience of how I've heard the bass, all right? The bass is very good. I mean, I'm talking about if you are mixing with KRK, you will love the bass so much that you might miss some little details, okay? So that's kind of why I personally don't place that um, at one at a pro level, but guys, it's good. So the KRKs will be my um, or the rockets. Of course, they have five, six, seven, eight, and all all, all that. So go for whatever you 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 can afford um, based on your budget. Okay. So um, see, like I told you, these cats they are almost in almost every studio. You see, this guy has it. You know, you're gonna see in a lot of studios. See, look at it. These guys have it. Okay, you're gonna see it in a lot of studios. Okay. Look at this studio. They got it. You're going to see in a lot of studios, okay? Um, but, of course, rockets are also there, too. So, um, like I said, um, the Yamaha S um, HS8 being your first option for the, for the advanced guys, 
the Rockets being your second, and then, of course, the JBL being your third. You will say, why is JBL still at three? JBL could be a number one based on what you are shooting for, okay? So, um, don't be let down. These are some very good power speakers that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, realize this. When I put in studio monitors, guess what? They don't come. Other ones come. All right? Somebody might go for this. For me, I don't like that. All right? I don't know what a Mackie studio monitor really sounds like, but I can imagine it sounds flat. I don't know. Um, but when you type in studio monitors, guess what? Rocket is one of the first ones that come up, okay? So that goes to tell you it's a very good machine. Look, you're going to see it all around, okay? Rocket is going to be everywhere, okay? KRK Rockets, um, don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. They are good. You see all these studio monitors? I really can't trust those. The Mackies and all that. I haven't used it, so I can't trust those. But if you want to go for those, surely... Um, um, sure, go for those, all right? But those three that I talked about, those are my personal um, top favorites that I'll say um, you go for if you are looking for studio monitors, okay? All right, great. So at this point, we've learned about MIDI controllers. We've learned about the laptop. We have learned about um, our MIDI interface. We have learned about a mixer. We have learned about our monitors, and we have learned about our headphones. Of course, what else do you need? The thing I'm talking into, okay? So somebody will ask, what kind of microphone do I need? Okay? So if you come and type microphone, you're going to get all kinds, and you'll be confused. Somebody will say, this looks fancy, so it's good. No, it does. it's not good. Look for what you really, 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 really need. Does it mean you cannot record with these headphones, uh, um, these microphones? Don't mess with it. They are good. Don't mess with it. So the word that you should be looking for, okay, the word you should be looking for is condenser microphone. Okay, that's what you should be looking for. All right? And when you do it, all these are going to come. MXL, good ones. Okay? You're going to see some roads, good ones. This, good ones. All that I will say is for this, stay within your budget and learn a few things about the microphone before you purchase it. Okay, these are Rhodes, very good microphones um, over the course of years. Okay, all right, let's see this group. I saw a group, yep, here. All right, these are all good microphones. Okay, don't say this guy is little so he cannot get a job done. You never know. Okay, you know, sometimes you might need to grab a, a few and test them out. Okay, all right. You might need um, to a few to test it out, all right? So I'm not really going to recommend my, I'm not going to give recommendations for these because you could go any way with microphone, but I will tell you brand, okay, that some of the top brands are Rhodes, okay? Rhodes is a top brand. You're going um, to you're gonna love those, okay? MXL is, is talked about a lot, okay? And of course, the other big dog is the new man. Okay, these are top dogs. I'm not talking about pl playing around. If you are doing this, that means you are ready to to, to, to to really get the job done. All right? These new mans are good. Okay? So, um, again, you could go anywhere. There's a lot of things for you to understand about condenser microphones. I'm not really going to have the time to discuss those things. But all that I will say is do a little bit of research before you do it. The whole thing is a lot of people want to make sure that when they are recording, they can get as much of clean voice as possible and get the best dynamics as possible. If you get a bad mic, um, condenser microphone, you might get a microphone that sounds uh, um, beefy or how would I say it? It sounds muddy, muddy. There you go. That's the word. It sounds muddy. Okay. You might get another microphone and it might sound good, but guess what? It might have too much height and it's so bad. Okay. So just be careful whenever you are choosing. Do a little bit of research on the the choice and then go for it if you want to really get a very good microphone i'll tell you new mics are very good i'll tell you any um level of rose from a certain level is good um and um uh, you know um yeah and and and, and 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 a few others that are good okay that um i would say don't fake on okay akg have been talked about a lot um i'm not going to discuss that um, because I haven't personally witnessed it, so I won't really talk about it. But some of the few um, are the ones I talked about, okay? So, if you've, you've been watching up till now, I'm sure you've got a lot of information on equipment.
these are gears you will use okay today i'm showing you my whole screen because i want to really be a great blessing to you um let me see if i have any questions so i can address them okay i can address those questions for you okay um okay i don't have anything all right cool so if you're still watching at this point okay i'm sure you're learning a lot so now let's get to basics of programming okay okay actually let's stay here let's stay here so what do you need to program we've talked about equipment so now let's talk about other things you may need you need something called a door so first off Let's go and research what a, what is a door and see what a door is. A door is a digital audio workstation. It's an electronic device or application software used for recording, editing, and producing audio files. Bam! When a lot of us were young, we were introduced to something called Audacity. Okay, let me type that in so you can re be reminded. We were introduced to something called Audacity, okay, which looks something like that, okay? Audacity is what we've been really introduced to um, from young age. But guess what? Audacity can only do so much for you, okay? Basic things, all right? So when we are looking for a door, we are looking for something that is digital audio workstation that can do a lot, okay? So let's look at some doors so I can... Door softwares, software list. Let me see. All right, so let's look at the top here. We see Ableton Live, okay? Ableton Live, okay? It's very good. Fruity Loops, a lot of people use it to make beats, um, a lot, uh, um, usually for beat makers, okay? Bitwig, I don't, I'm not really familiar with it. I won't talk about it much. Reaper, I've heard about it. I haven't used it. Pro Tools, very good. Steinberg, very good. Reason, very good. Um, digital performance, I haven't used it, I won't talk about it. Logic, very good, that is my, my field, that's what I use, okay. Um, um, Ardor, I've, I haven't used it before. LMMS, I've heard of it, haven't used it. MuLab, haven't used it. Mixcraft, let me tell you this, when, when I started doing programming, guess what my first software that I ever used was? Mixcraft, Mixcraft. Don't play with that boy. If you are somebody who likes Logic, but you are, you, you, so you are sad that Logic is not on Windows, don't quit on this guy. This was, the only reason why I got this is because I didn't have a Mac at the time. I didn't have a Mac at the time, and this guy did it for me, okay? Don't quit on this. If you are, if you are not a Mac user, okay? If you are not a Mac user and, 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 and you like Logic, don't quit on this guy. All right, I still love it, okay? I still love it, I still love it, okay? And I think I still have it on my PC, um, just whenever, I, no, never mind, I'm lying to you. I, I, I deleted it because I have a new, I have a new computer that I use for broadcasting. I, I don't put softwares as outside of um, TV on it. This is on, only, f the PC is only for TV. All right, so guys, you are learning a lot from these softwares, okay? We got to miss crap, very good. Cakewalk, heard of it, haven't used it. Adobe Audition used for other things. Studio One, very good, okay? Um, Studio One is very good as well. Um, and, and all these, okay? Um, and GarageBand, um, which is made of, uh, Logic is made of um, GarageBand and, and, and stuff like that, okay? So that is what a door is. So you will ask me, what door should I use, okay? What I will tell you is this. If you're a Logic user, sorry, if you're a Mac user, okay, your top your top um, doors I think you should really look at is, oh, sorry, there's one common one I didn't even bring up. Okay, it's called Cubase. A lot of Ghanaians and Africans, like uh, African engineers use that a lot. Cubase, very, very, very good. Okay, so don't play with that also. Cubase right there, okay? Don't play with Cubase, very good, okay? I'll tell you what my, tops, my top doors are shortly. So if you need a door for Mac. I would say go either GarageBand if you're a very beginner, okay? Logic if you really want to get advanced. Pro Tools, okay? 
or any of the other ones, I won't talk about those because those are optional, okay? Ableton, Studio One, and all that. It's, however, it, that one is all about taste and experience. But the top dogs I would say look into if you're a Mac user is beginners. Go for GarageBand, okay? If you want to get advanced and really get to the bottom of things, look into Logic or Pro Tools, okay? Pro Tools is kind of the big dog that everybody talks about, but don't fake on Logic, okay? Logic is as good as Pro Tools if you know what you're doing, okay? So Pro Tools and Logic are kind of the big dogs on Mac, okay? All right, so that is kind of on the Mac side. Now, on the Windows side, Pro Tools is your big dog there. Cubase, um, um, am I missing something? Pro Tools, Cubase, of course, FL Loops. That is that a thing too. A lot of people use FL Loops, okay, and I think that's for both. Both. So, um, you know, don't fake on FL Loops right, for, for, for beat makers, okay? All right, so on the Windows side, like I said, Pro Tools, um, Cubase, um, I have to look at the list so I can remember, to, uh, I, I can tell you easily. All right, so DAW Windows. Okay. Anyways, it does, it's not even a big deal, but Cubase, um, Cubase Pro Tools, and I think Reason is for um, Windows 2, but that is a good one as well. All right. Um, again, you will need these softwares based on your needs. You might need it for live situations. You might need it for recording situations. I wouldn't say one is too good than the other, but there are um, some limitations based on what you're doing. For instance, FL, you can't compare a Pro Tools to F FL. No, Pro Tools is on another level than FL, okay? FL is basically, um, you know, used for beat making and you work in a great, great style. I don't know if they've up made any up kind of updates I don't know about, but it's made in a great style and you can't compare that to Pro Tools and some of these other cats, okay? so. That is what you need to know about DAWs, okay? So you've learned about the equipment side of things. Now you know a little bit about how DAWs work, okay? So now let's get into logic and let's talk about some basics about logic, okay? So these are the basics you need to know about being a sound engineer, okay, or um, a, a, a music programmer, I should say. Somebody come to you and say, Mr. Stein, I need to record my music, okay? The first thing you tell them is, all right, Come into the studio, whatever the person is in the studio, you open your door. We're going to start from scratch. I open Logic. When I open Logic, Logic is going to open up for me. Okay. We give it some time to load up for us. Okay, Logic opens up for us. Then we look at new project, okay? Now, when it opens up for us, there are a few settings that are down here. Yours might look like this. You will need to open it and work on those. I will tell you this. You can either do it here or you, cannot do, you, you can choose not to do it here. For now, I will do everything here. Say I know I'm going to work. Say I don't really know what tempo is. I don't know any of this stuff. So let me just, for now, let me forget about all these things and go on. So we're going to just... Click empty project, or we can click on one and click choose, or click on one and click choose, or double click, same thing, all right? So we get into the software, all right? The first thing is it says pick something. We're just going to pick a random one, software. Now, the first thing for you to understand is before you work on anybody's song, before you work on any project, okay, the first thing for you to consider is the settings of the project, okay? So here's the deal. Temple. Hear how Temple sounds like. Okay. That thing you are hearing, that is called Temple. That one is called Temple. So the first thing is, if you're going to work on a song, you need to know the Temple. Okay. So say I'm going to work on some kind of reggae song. Reggae song. And I hear this. It might be a little too fast for me. So I may say, okay, let me reduce it by maybe 110. And let me hear that, how that sounds. 
Okay, seems like it's getting there. How about let's try 95, maybe? Okay, for now, let's just say it's cool. Let's just say 95 is cool for us, okay? So that's what a tempo is. Understanding that. Please don't start a song without setting the right project settings or you are going to suffer. You will suffer. Please don't do it. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Okay? So, that is what um, a tempo is, okay? That is what a tempo is. So then, the next thing for you to consider is called key. We set our tempo. Now we need to worry about our key. So say I'm going to do a song in the key of C. I need to make sure that I have my key, the right key selected. Okay? The purpose to that is if you have to do any kind of project modifications or you're editing vocals and you have to do things like cleaning up, it's going to be very important. So please just set the right key. And at the end of the day, it helps you to stay clean. So these two big dogs, the tempo and the key, are your big ones. Your time signature, most times 4-4 four four is okay. Depending on what kind of music you're doing, you may change it. But I'll tell you 4-4 four four is okay. So it says beats and project. That is kind of how you see it. If you want to see the length of your project, you come to time. Right now we are 0-0. Zero zero. The more we keep working... It's at 10 seconds, blah, 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 blah. It keeps going to whenever we finish, okay? So that's how you're able to see your time. You can also keep it here so you can see a bit more. Okay, for now, let me keep it to um, project like that. Keep it that simple, all right? So that's the first thing. Now, another thing that I really want to talk about that will may save somebody's life, okay, is this thing right here. Most times, most times, this thing may be set to the wrong place. What that means is sometimes when you are dragging, say I recorded something. Say I recorded something, okay? Say I recorded something, and I was trying to maybe, um, say, drag it to the nearest. When I'm dragging, you realize that this one is fitting to the the lines right if it wasn't said right and let's just say let me see if i can find yes see so you realize that i want to set it in between okay and i'm able to do that but watch this when this is on what's the difference i'm moving in the middle it won't let me it, it's not letting me okay so the point is if you ever having any kind of issue where the dragon is being an, a problem come here these are these are gonna help you out, okay? I don't know how yours will look like, but just always make sure it's on smart, okay? Keep it on smart, all right? Save your life, all right? So that is something for you to keep um, um, keep in mind. Now, there's something that I really want to talk about. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna remember, um, but there's something that I really uh, let me see. Um, there's something I know I wanted to discuss. Um, anyways, if it comes up, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and talk about it for now. Um, for now, it's not, it's not here. Anyways, cool. So those are some of the basic things for you to consider, okay? So that is how you set up a project before you begin work, okay? This section that you guys are seeing is called a library, just like you see it up here. This is your library where you pick instruments from, okay? That is your library, okay? Now, in your record settings, there's something called count in. So say you're about to record, okay? And you click your record button. You realize that it gave me one two, three, four, before it started recording, that is called count in. If I want a longer time than that, I can make it two bars and hear it now. OK? 
okay? So it gave me two bars, then it started. So you may need it longer for whatever it is. Why would, we, would you use this? If I'm the only one in the studio recording, I may need a longer one so I can walk to wherever the microphone is to record my voice. That's why you may need something like that. Or if I'm recording a song and the person keeps messing up or we having to do it in bits, I may need a longer one so the person can kind of catch the, get in the groove of whatever they were doing earlier and continue on doing it from the point that we are working from, okay? So that is why you may need that, okay? For the mo most times, I just set it to one, but most times, a lot of you would need it at two. One and two would be your best friend at the base minimum, okay? For me, I leave it at two. Or you can say none. If you are doing something like a worship song, some you may not have the time to do that, okay? Or you may need it. It all depends, okay? So, we have that set. The first question is Minister Stein. So, if I'm going to do a reggae song, because that's what we said we're going to do, what? How do I start? Do I start with the instruments? Do I start with what? How do I get about it? So the, what I'm going to tell you is, you is you need to start with drums. Okay. So I'm going to pick one of my libraries that I like to use. Um. Yeah. Let me keep it simple. I'm going to pick. So here, a stereo output. What that means is this. I'm going to pick a track, and then I'm going to record everything in one. A multi-output means I'm going to pick one and I'm going to have them bust out to separate tracks. So in other words, I can play a kick drum and a snare and then every single note that registered on the keyboard will be its own separate channel. Okay? But if I do stereo, everything I played will be one stereo channel. So you get the point? All right? So you may need a multi-output. Okay? to start with. I hope you guys are learning. So you may you may need a multi output. Let's give it time for it to um um process. All right, it's taking longer because I'm streaming, right? Oh, sorry. Did I do contact? That's not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to use my battery, multi-output again. Okay. I picked the wrong thing. I wasn't paying attention. So while it's loading, um, I hope you guys have, you know, you guys are learning. If you have any questions, do let me know, and I'll be glad to answer you. Okay. So this here is basically like a sampler, and I'm going to load instruments in here. So for example, if I wanted to use kits in here, and I picked maybe digital drum kits, and I loaded this one, then I can play whatever is in there. So remember what I said. A MIDI is used to control something. Remember something. When I didn't have anything in here, let me show you again. When I didn't have anything in here and it looked like that, whenever I play, you can't hear anything. You see, it's registering up here. You see up here? Up here, it's registering. You see my notes registering, right? You see my notes registering, right? But you're not hearing anything. But now, I put on a sound. And now, when I play... <laughs> Now you can hear, right? So, that's what I mean by that. Okay, so now I can play something, right? So, let, for now, so just so we can, we don't waste time, we are going to use just this, okay? So, a reggae. If I'm going to play, I may need a hi-hat, okay? So, or a shake. So... Okay, this is here. This is also here.
anyways, so I'm going to come up with maybe um, the shaker. Maybe let's say I like this one, this sound. So I'm going to do. Let's use that. Okay, so let's set a simple loop. Okay, that's what I did. Look, loop. I just clicked on it, or I can make it longer by making it longer to whatever I need. Okay, so maybe I may need um, just about, let me see, that's one bar, two bar, three, one bar, two bar, three bar, four bars. I just need four bars, okay? You are asking me what am I talking about bars here? This is a bar. This is a bar. This is a bar. This is a bar. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So it goes one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, two. One, two, three, four, three. One, two, three, four, four. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So. So let's make that beat. Okay, that's a bit too fast. Let's see. Okay, I got it. So I have to slow down a little bit. Okay, let's just say we like it. All right, it's not perfect, so don't worry about it. All right, so here, this is called your piano row. Okay, the way I got to that is I double click it, double click it to come inside it. All right, now you realize something. You realize that, hey, how are some of the colors different? This one looks like this, this one looks like this, this one looks like that. So the way I target that is I'm going to set that to a fixed velocity. So I highlighted that. Okay, highlight it all. Okay, then go to MIDI transform, fixed velocity. Okay, now, if you know your, your, if you know your, um, your numbers, you'll be able to know how to do it. But let's just say I don't know. I can click on this one and see what that is. That one is at a velocity of 122. 122. This one is at a velocity of 121. A velocity of 119. Okay, so I may say, okay, let me just make it all 120. Okay, let's just say. And I'll just make it all 120. And now, guess what? All the colors look like the same thing. All right? So that's one way to get this done. Okay? And of course, keep in mind, I didn't only do, um, um, I didn't only do the snare. So you might have to be, you might have to select the ones you need to do that. You might have to do it for the snare, everything. So that is the first thing I've done here. Now there's another thing called quantization. You can select it all so that it can fit to the line. Keep in mind, it's not fitting to the line. So the only way it fits to the line is if I quantize it. So I can click the Q all over here or on my keyboard and it will quantize it. So watch what's going to happen. Everything is quantized. It all fits to the closest line. Keep in mind, if I didn't have this set up right, it could have behaved differently, okay? So keep in mind, set up your project right so things can work out the right way for you, okay? So now, with what we played, we have something like this. All right, we have something like that, sure. What if we say we want to do a kick? So say we want this kick. Okay, this one sounds good too. All right, it's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. Ah, we will use that one. So let's go. All right. 
So we'll do the same thing, quantize it. Quantize it, and then if we have to fix the velocity, we'll fix it. Okay, so we might make some changes here. Let's see. All right, so let's just say we like that, and then maybe you want to add something else. All right, and let's just say I want to add that in. I quantize that in, okay? All right, let's just say I'm feeling too lazy. I want to add in some kind of shaker and I'm feeling a bit lazy. Let's just say I'm feeling a bit lazy. I can add in a, a, a simple shaker, okay? Somebody may ask, why did I delete the bus stuff, okay? All right, now, this is not perfect, okay? This is not perfect, but I'm just trying to get you to get the idea, okay? All right, now, say I wanted to do um, a duplication of this and maybe do... Maybe a clap. Maybe a clap, okay? So I can pick a percussion, um, a sample instrument, and then go find a clap. Percussion, clap, 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 clap. Where is it at? Um, okay. Yo, I'm already there. I'm, I'm tripping. Okay, see, I like I like that clap. Then I can decide to record that in separately. All right, open the MIDI editor or the piano roll. Okay. Okay, so now, at this point, what we have is we have a basic thing. This is not a real way. I have to take my time to do certain things, but I'm trying to, um, in a way, speed it up because this is not the point to why we are here. All right, so now, now that I have this, I can decide to maybe make this a bit longer. Okay, uh-oh, come on. Loop for me. There you go. I can decide to maybe make it maybe four times so that I can maybe get my chords in, okay? So let's see how it looks. All 
All right. So everything sounds good to us at this point. Okay. So now we can say, okay, let's put in some some instruments. Okay. So then I can load up some instruments. Okay. So we are going to do a simple thing. We're going to do something like ten, 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 ten. Okay. Don't mind my voice. All right. So let's come up with a, a simple chord arrangement. Okay. All right. It's loading. Give me a few, um, a few seconds for it to load up. Okay. Do I have any questions? Remember, I'll answer your questions. If you have any questions, ask. I'll answer. Okay. All right. While it's loading, let me check on you guys. All right, great. So while it's, while it's loading, okay, um, what we are doing here is we are doing something called music programming. So if you want to be a music programmer, you have to learn how to do this, okay? So I'm teaching you how to do this from beginning to end. So this might end up being a three-hour broadcast. I don't know. Two-hour, three-hour. I don't know. So just hang on. I know some of you guys are learning something. All right, cool. So I have something up. All right. Let's just say I want to load up a keyboard. All right, let me layer it a little bit. So maybe this is going to be called our EP, which stands for Electric Piano. Guys, learn how to name your files, okay? Learn how to name your files, okay? So at this point, we have this beat here. Okay? And then we're just going to come up with random chords like... Something random, okay? So let's do... Um, that and then let me put in a bass real quick so that it can help guide us so the bass is going to help guide us all right that's not the first thing i usually like recording but um for the purpose of this lesson i'm going to do that Okay, so we're just going to come up with something random. So let's go. All right, and you guys realize what I'm doing. Very simple, straightforward. All right, so at this point, I can decide to loop it up out. 
Okay. Chords, okay. We, okay, we're gonna add the chords and to the chords to what I'm playing, okay. If you want to make it a bit a bit richer, you might have to make more switches. So I'm doing. the course I'm playing. So you gotta figure those calls out. Something like that, so let's do something like that to make it fun, okay? Of course, I want to chop, so don't ever do that. If you understand reggae, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Obviously, I'm a little slow, but don't worry. That's why it's called programming. The programming will take care of all those delays, okay? I played the wrong arrangement. Let me do it one more time. something like that going for us okay now we can you can do your velocity fix I'm not gonna have time for all that so I'm just gonna keep it simple At this point, you see, you are starting to have a music, right? So then you might be like, oh, in reggae music, what else do they have? Of course, we all know they have organs, right? So for the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to use one of my factory-based organs. Um, let me see. Jazz organ. And let me pick one of these. Yeah, I'm just going to pick... Um, one of these ones and use that to do it. So.
differently, to make it different, okay? time I don't have time to keep repeating myself so I'm gonna make it sound like this <laughs> So at this point, we have some music going, right? And then, of course, you do your rollings and all that. I'm not going to have time to do all that stuff. I'm going to... Um, so what we are doing here is called programming. We are programming a music, okay? So that's what is going on right now, okay? So we might say... We might say we want to add something else um, to spice it up a little bit. So maybe... Let's just say we go for my synthage again. And let me load up um, a quick sound. Okay. Let's load up like a lead or something like that. Say we want this one. All right. So. So I'm just going to do that to just play random things, okay? Just to kind of make it nice. Random. I don't know what I'm going to do. Be random, okay? So, so let me just be random here. Oh, come on. Let's try it again. Okay. some wrong chords so of course I'm, I'm not taking my time this is just like that right Just to kind of um, play some things. This thing that I'm doing, a lot of people call it ear candy. Okay. Um, so I might just call this um, flute for now. Or synth lead. Synth lead. Okay. Synth lead for right now. All right. And I have something like this going. Okay. 
Um, let's see. <laughs> Let me tell you another thing some people will do. Some people will do the pad also. So let me show you um, for the pad. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. So for the pad, let me pick some random pad here from Sintage again. Okay. All right. So from Sintage. Um, I'll pick a pad and I'll pick something I like. Let me see. So I'm just going to do that pad, okay? All right, and of course, the pad is just going to help it stay together, okay? So I'm just going to use it for the background or whatever. So... Okay. All right, let's try that again. See, I like this more. I can split it. And then I can put it in the beginning. And then loop it out. Let's see how that <laughs> So now, when we listen to everything we've done, here are the instrumentation. Instead of doing that, so this is the real order of how you should program. So this one will be the pad, right? So if you are programming, what you should start with is start with your pad being your first. That's the easiest thing. So after your pad, the next thing you should think about is your EP. So within a few minutes, we have all these, right? Of course, if I want, if I was like, man, this don't really sound like African reggae or whatever, I'm like, okay, let me add some conga. So the congas also, you could get it from here. Um, 
I have my presets, so I'm just going to load my presets to make it quicker. Um, but you can use whatever you use. So I'm just going to play one, you know, dose and make it simple. So. I'm just being random there. This is not a real way to play Konka. I'm just being very, very practical and random there. Okay? So don't mind the play or anything like that. All right? So that is the first thing. Um, you know, the next thing I'll add in there just to make it a bit more lovely. So the, co the drum should sound something like this now. All right, the drum should sound something like this now. Let me show you another cool trick, okay? So say you're not a very good conka person, okay? What you could do is you could come into the editor and edit all your notes that you, you want to edit. So let's start from the beginning. So beginning, we played. You see that, that, but I, so we can, we can make it like this. All right. Okay, you see how it does that? We can decide like, okay, let's make it like maybe three here. Make it sound cool. So I'm just duplicating it. So let's hear how that sounds. You see that? And then maybe here, I can say, I can say I want it to be like this. Let's see. No. So I can say I want it to be like this. I'll delete this note and then I can make it twice here. You see over there, it did boom, boom, boom. I can make it double here. Then here, I can make it like this. Here, let's see. And then here, I can duplicate it. And then there, I can duplicate it. So you get a point. The point is. point is you can edit it as you need okay i'm not going to spend time and do all that so you can go in there and edit whenever you're doing your editing or do your engineering okay so within a few minutes of programming we have these drums together
So you guys realize how I played the conca? I wanted to make it sound real. <laughs> That's why I was playing it like that. So, but it's fine. <laughs> So the point here, the point we are at is now we have this beat, okay? So now, this is what is called programming. Say we were done with the song. We have nine tracks so far. What are tracks? Read the numbers. One, two, three, four. This one is called a track. Two tracks, three tracks, four tracks, all the way to whatever you want. By the time you are done with an average programming, you are going to have somewhere in the 30s. An average programming. Depending on what kind of song you are doing. Depending on... Uh, for instance, we're going to add brass, okay? If you add brass or something like that, you're going to have all these things you have to do. And keep in mind, all these instruments, okay, let me talk about that. So remember I told you we are going to do this in multi-output, okay? Here. You see it's in multi, multi-output, okay? You see it's a multi-output instrument. So on the track, one of the things you see is the plus, all the instruments that have been registered in here are all separate things that you could give its own separate track if you're doing mixing. So let me talk about that real quick. So in here, you realize that when I play, you're going to see the ones I play blinking. You see? So this is blinking. This is blinking. This is blinking. And this is blanket. Stereo out. One. This. So you realize now I've sent them, I've, I've mapped it. So what I'm doing now is called mapping. Okay. So what I've done, what I've just done is called mapping. Okay. I'm mapping it. So now that I've mapped it, it's going to correspond to what is at the bottom. So when I, I'm going to just keep clicking plus, 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 plus. You see, you don't hear it anymore, right? You see now only kick is playing. That's because that is still going to one. So I'm going to keep making a lot of channels. Now I'm going to try and find where the others are at. So I found it, that one. That one is a snare. So I can call it snare. And I can find the rest. This one is a kick. Okay, so let's find the rest. Okay, that's the hi-hat. I'm just going to call it HH for hi-hat. I found that one. Okay, that's my shaker. So I'm just going to call it SHK. And that's it. So now, all these other channels that I just enabled, I can delete them because I found all the instruments I need. So that is what a multi-output rec um, um, recording is. If I did a stereo, I wouldn't be able to do it this way. It would be just like these ones without a plus. You see, these ones don't have a plus. But the multi-output ones have a plus. You see? So now that I have that, you see? So now I can control the mixing of it. That way I can mix it in the way I want it. So that's the only reason why you may want to do it like that for mixing purposes, okay? Say I didn't want this. And yeah, fe and I may be bim no my baby deleting the free hat. I just control it from the mixing. I just take it out. You see that? So that's the whole purpose of why you would do that. You play it one time, but you mix it like it's individual. That's the beauty of it, right? It's beautiful. Cool. So let me take all that out and let it go play. So at this point, say we are done with our song. Let's listen to it one more time and let's talk about mixing.
Cool. We got it? So now let's talk about mixing. Okay, what is mixing? So mixing is saying, okay, I did all this, but it doesn't sound good to me. It sounds kind of a little too boom. <laughs> if I say boom, you understand. A tua boom, a tua boom. No separation, nothing. Okay? So that is when all this will come in. So let's talk about mixing. So before you mix, okay, the most important thing for you to understand about mixing, let me make this like this so you can see everything that I'm doing here. So first things first is I'm going to highlight everything here. I'm going to take off every, every effect on it and send on it, uh, bus send on it. I'm going to take it all off. I'm going to take every single effect off. Very important, guys. Very important. Don't miss this step or you are going to be screwed. Please, listen to me. Make sure it's zero. Zero stuff going on. Somebody might say, why is this all reading, read, 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 and some not? It's not a big deal. If you want all of them to read, read, click it. All right? It's only going to help for the automation, which when I click A and I want to automate it, you know, I can come in here and automate it. Like, say, I want this part to be lower. I can make it lower. This part to be higher. I'll make it higher. That, that. Without the read on, automation will not work. So that is the whole purpose of that. See? Automation don't work without it. Okay? So, guys, no big deal, right? Okay. So let me take that off. All right. So mixing. What are the few things we need to consider before we mix a song, okay? So here, I'm going to just do a rough mixing for you so you kind of get the feel of it, okay? So the first thing I personally do, okay, is I lower all the tracks to zero, okay? I lower, actually, you know what? Let me do this to make this easy for me so I don't have to keep clicking, 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 clicking. Don't worry about what I'm doing. It's just for me to understand don't worry. Um, Vegas mode and nibble. And then jump exponential. Good, 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 good. All right. So don't worry about that extra thing that I'm doing there. It's just for me. All right. So. Okay, cool. So I just want to be able to control my knobs. That's all. Okay? So, with what I'm doing here, what I like to do for mixing is I like to bring all of them to zero. Okay? Everything to zero. Of course, not, not my master. My master always stay. Okay, keep in mind. Master always keep at zero. Never change that number. Remember that always. Master, keep it at zero. Okay? Delete any effect you haven't created like we did on the other one. Okay? Only keep what you recorded. Very important. Any additional stuff the system does for you, delete it. You don't need it. So at this point, bring all these to zero, 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 zero. Let it look like how it's looking. Okay? And then this to zero. Okay? So first things first. When I play, you're not going to hear anything. Okay? I'm just going to let it keep playing. Oh, shoot. I didn't do one. <laughs> Sorry about that. So... Here, zero, right? You don't hear anything. That's what you want for mixing. Because if all these numbers are bad, the number here is going to be peaking in red, and that is a bad sign for a mix engineer. So at this at, if you have gotten to this point, congratulations. You have learned how to program in Logic or any music door. For most music doors, it's going to be the same, okay? So congratulations um, about... Um, for your great accomplishment. So now let's talk about mixing. We're gonna mix our kick first, okay? Let's just say we wanna mix our kick. The way mixing works is this. We are gonna use these, the channel. All these are called channels. On every channel, you have certain amount of things you can do. Let's talk about all these things, okay? For these, this part, you don't need to really worry about it so much. You won't have to do much there. But starting with the EQ, that is where you need to pay attention. The EQ is where you're going to equalize your channels or your inputs. 
So like, what is an EQ? So on, on an EQ, you would say that, okay, my kick is a low instrument, okay? So I'm going to let all the lows or a certain amount of lows pass through. Then I'm going to kill maybe my highs. Or I'm going to say I want a little bit of room of high because I want certain ambience to shoot through the high. So that is where you'll be like, you will be able to control that kind of thing, okay? So that is what the, an EQ is. And ex another example, maybe a hi-hat. It's a high-level instrument. A hi-hat is a high-level instrument. You might say, oh, no, I don't want my hi-hat to have lows in it. So guess what? You will kill your lows and let some of the highs pass through, okay? And so on and so on. So that's what an EQ does, okay? Then a MIDI, if, um, a MIDI FX is... Um, you know, other things that you may need to do. For instance, if I'm playing a key and I don't know how to play the original key, I will use the transposer and I'll transpose it to however I need to play it and then play that, okay? So that is what an, a MIDI figure, and you can do all these other stuff on it. Um, I don't worry about that, don't make sense. At this point, if you are doing mixing, you don't need to worry about MIDI effects, okay? The only thing you need to worry about is equalization and then from equalization, okay, Audio FX, not MIDI FX, audio FX, okay? At audio FX, okay, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be adding um, effects on to, to really make it stronger, okay? Not MIDI FX, but audio FX, okay? That is to really control the dynamics of your sound and stuff like that, okay? So that is what you use audio FX to do. Okay. All right. So you use audio effects to do that. All right. Then your sense is where you do your bass sense. Realize I deleted the other ones, so it should be clean now. So you can do your own sense. All right. So in mixing, here are the most important ones you're going to need. Equalization, your audio effects, your sense for your buses, your bus, your bus um, groups, okay, or and your group if you're ever gonna assign any group. I don't usually do it, but sometimes you will need to do it based on what you are mixing. You, maybe you are you are mixing drums. You might send all your drums to one group so that you can control the overall sound. That's when you create a group for that. So the way that will work is you highlight, you you will work on all of it all. And then you send all of them to one group, and you can call that new. And guess what? All of them are to one group, okay? And then that can have a separate control for it, okay? For now, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay? So, the song is playing. We don't hear anything quite yet. So, we're going we're gonna to bring the kick in at a very low level. To start up, okay. Don't start at zero. Start at a, maybe at a low level here, somewhere like that, okay. Then let's start with our equalization. Remember, I said EQ, audio effects, send, and group. Those are the most important things you're going to do. And then, of course, your automation. If you're going to do any sort of automation, automation. So EQ, I come in. My analyzer is showing my low end. But my high end, nothing is really peaking. So I can say, okay, let me kill some of my highs. But guess what? It sounds so muddy, right? So I need to let a little room. I may even need something like that, okay? But you decide. So for the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to cut to maybe 2K, okay? Okay? And I can decide to leave it like that. Or I can decide to cut a little bit of the low here. Okay. All right. I can decide to make it sound like that. Okay. So that is my equalization that I've just done. Congratulations. You have learned how to equalize a track. So now let's go to the next important one we said. We said EQ, and we said audio effects. Which your audio effects is part of your EQ, by the way. So go to the next one, and then add something that you may want. 
I'm just going to go straight to the point and tell you what I use. I use ways to master and mix and master. Okay. So you may come to your compressor. Uh oh. It's being slow right now because I'm streaming. So <laughs> forgive me for that. I'm streaming. So it's being slow. So you, can, you may come to your compressor and pick a compressor. All right. And I'm not going to be able to tell you how this all works. You would have to take your time to learn. But I'm going to give you the idea, okay? The idea here is if you're going to add a compressor, make sure it's not hitting the red. Watch. If they start blinking, that means you're having distortion. Watch. You realize that? And you should be hearing bad sound on your, on your side, okay? So don't just boost it just because it's a compressor. Okay, be careful. So here's how a compressor works. The threshold, if it's sitting at the top, that means you want every single sound to pass through. Every single, every possibility. You don't want to cut anything. Okay? So it will say at 100, or sorry, at 1, cut this. At whatever, cut this. Okay? So that's how it's, it, it, it works with this compressor. Of course, you can use the light whichever one you are familiar with for me i like the legacy because that is the original that i learned with so i always like to keep it the same you can go with the new looks however you like um like i said for me i go with the legacy because that is simply what i like to use okay so here so for a kick i don't think i want to cut much because the more i cut it becomes softer right Okay, the more I cut, it becomes softer. I could say I want to cut. I want to cut. I could say I want to cut that and then bring it up. Uh oh, see? See? You saw that? So at this point, I'm trying to clean up the mix. So again, you don't want to really put much pressure on kicks. The idea is let it sit here and work on your gain. All right. So say I like what I hear. I can decide to bring it up. But keep in mind, you want to record low. All right, because the more this number gets in red, it's going to be bad. The idea is by the time we finish this mix, this number should be sitting at negative 3.2 or negative 2, if anything. Anywhere between negative 4 and negative, negative 4, negative 3 area is fine, okay? All right, that's the goal. That's the goal. So at this point, we, these are EQs and compressions we have done. Let's do EQs and compression on everything, then we continue. So on the snare, we bring in our snare. All right, say we are we want to do equalization on snare we can also go to the equalization double click it now i'm not going to be able to really do a true mixing here so bear with me you see the peaks this region has a little look at it look look at the shape so you're gonna have to try to imitate that by cutting whatever you need okay so an example Sorry, guys. An example will be here. Cutting it. Cutting whatever you, you feel like you need to cut. Okay? So that is the whole idea of equalization. Cut out what you think you don't need. Now, of course, in you don't need 
your base. So cut those out. And if you feel like you need to cut any other area out, cut it out. Okay? Or look for certain areas you don't like. Say I don't like this. I can cut it out over there. Okay? So that is the idea behind mixing, okay? Of course, I can decide that, okay, let me cut a little bit of this. So without equalization, it sounds like this. And with equalization, it sounds like this. Again, this is not true mixing. I'm just trying to help you to get an idea. All right? At this point, I could come here, pick another compressor. I could say, okay. Realize I'm not messing with the attack and release, right? Because I don't want to spend too much time on the compressor, so that's why I'm not talking about it. But you do it based on the level of um, um, the, the level of softness you want it to be, and also the time, okay, to, to control the time of compression, okay, or the duration of the compression. So that's why you use something like that. All right. See, at this point, I have this at a level I want. That is equalization and compression. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go fast between all of the rest. Hi hat. I soloed it, say I want to hear it and the kick. I can decide to come in here. It's a high instrument. I can decide to say, okay, for this, I'm not going to worry too much. Let me, kill, let me kill about 500 to 800K of the bass. I can say I want to brighten it a little bit. Okay, but that's not what I want to do, right? So I'm just going to keep it like that and maybe brighten it a little bit, maybe like that. So without it, with it, okay, some compression. I'm going to be fast, so don't worry about what I'm doing. fast with what I'm doing to make it quicker. My shaker. You guys get idea with that. So I'm not going to keep talking about it too much, okay? It's peaking, right? It's bad. So that's what I was talking about. All right. So this shaker is the same thing as this remix shaker. So I'm just going to mix them together. going to give it the same settings for the purpose of mixing fast. It's called panning, all right? If you feel like you need to pan to make it a bit more cleaner, 
you can pan it, all right? That's called panning. Okay? So let's continue doing our equalizations and compressions. Let's bring this in. That's our cowbell or our clap. So let's just call it clap. I'm just doing quick mixing, so don't worry. goes It's called mixing, okay? Mixing, mixing, okay? So we did programming, now we are doing mixing. The first one we did was called programming. This one we are doing is called mixing. So I can say I want to mix all this in, but I don't have the time to really take the time. So for now, I'm just going to put just compression on it or something.
equalization and compressions we've done, right? So let's play it all together so we can hear it well. about this side I'm feeling a bit too lazy to do it um, because my computer is acting slow because I'm broadcasting and doing all this and it's a lot of work on the computer so um, you know um, don't worry about the fact that I didn't do that so now let's talk about that stuff okay so some of that stuff are stuff like say some instruments need a little bit of reverb okay so then you go on it and go find the reverb of your choice and then add it to it you know whether you use a, a a software based river put that on it or if you use a wave river um, go ahead and put that on it all right I like using our verb okay you could go ahead and put an our verb on whatever you feel like you need a verb on okay um, so for the purpose of this lesson I don't want to do it that way I'm going to do it in in a bus in a bus way so I'm going to call this bus verb to stand for reverb and then, yeah, and then I'm going to move this to the bus one, okay? And that's going to be a full reverb over there, okay? So if I'm to open it up, you hear the reverb, right? But of course, I don't want a reverb there. And even if I do, it will be minimal, okay? Okay, if I want it, it will be minimal. Then the snare, if I wanted a, some form of reverb. See, I wanted a reverb on all the drums. Let's just say that. Then I will, I can highlight all of them and then send them to bus one. Then they can all have it. Then I can open it up so they can all have reverb. Okay? That's if you want it. However, you can control each individual you can control each, each individual so say my snare is too much I can decide that okay that's a bit too much for my taste Again, this is not a real processing. I just want to give you the idea, okay? So at this point, I have reverbs on the drums, okay? So let's see how that all sounds together. Remember what I told you? By the time we finish mixing, this number should be between negative 4 and negative 3. If anything, negative 2. Guess where we are at? Negative 3. That is what you want in mixing, okay? Don't go in the reds. Don't go in the yellows, okay? This is what it's called clean mixing so pay attention to this number anytime it goes to the red or it starts getting in the yellows that means we are doing a bad job right now so we have to lower it okay so pay attention to that number all the time see we are negative four right now and that is very good it goes to negative three the more it goes higher it's going to be bad now it should come back to negative three or negative two that will tell you that we are doing a good job good job you can even give it more room and by taking it down more right okay so at this point we've done equal equalizations and compressions okay and then I just added some random verbs to it okay at this point if you have gotten to this stage you've really gotten let's say 60% of the mixing work done if you have gotten to this stage okay so at this point we have this thing here
I, I took the pan off, of course. You would have to understand the concept of panning, okay? Panning works this way. Uh, if you know an instrument is supposed to be a left side, take it to the left side. If you know it's supposed to be right side, take it to the right. Let it sit in the middle if it has to be in the middle, okay? That's how panning works. So you have to understand the panning concept. That is something you have to study about. At this point, if we are happy with what we've done, that is called a job done. So now, at this point, the way you would bounce out your project, say that everything is done, the vocals, everything is done, you're ready to bounce out your project. Go to File, go to Bounce, and click Entire Project, and realize I have the loop on. That is because I want to bounce out a specific region. Bounce out in PCM, never do MP3 if you are going to be using it for mastering work. Okay, then send it, um, send the wave to 32-bit thir throat or 24. 24, I prefer um, for easy workflow. Okay, then from here, I'm going to, okay, all these settings, wave is fine, 24-bit is fine, 44-100 is fine, uh, interlaved is fine, dead rain none, that's okay. Real time means it's going to play back while it's bouncing, don't do it. Just leave it offline. It's no point. Normalize, please keep it off. Don't no point of extra additional gain. Keep it simple. All right. At this point, you are ready to bounce out your mix. Okay. So this is your mix. So we're gonna call this mix. Okay. And then we're gonna bounce it out. So now that that is bouncing out, we'll be able to get an a file that will that will that will be ready for mastering. So if you were taking it to another mastering engineer. You will send that file to the mastering engineer, okay? So let's just say I like what we've done. I don't want to lose it, okay? Which I'm going to delete anyways, but for the purpose of the lesson, I'm going to say reggae class. Reggae class. Okay? And I'm going to save that. I'm going to delete. I don't, I don't need it, but for the purpose of um, what I'm trying to teach. Okay? So at this point, We have our mix here, okay? So I'm going to open another logic file. I'm going to open a new one. And I'm going to open audio, okay? And from here, I'll pick my desktop and go ahead and add my mix file in. I'll import it in, set my loop region, okay, and then we'll master. Now, one of the things for you to consider in mastering is it's good to use a reference, okay? So use a reference track so you can get the right stuff, okay? So at this point, if I'm here, I want to get this, the song to the best level. That is why I'm here, okay? So everything keep at zero, and let's get the work done, okay? So we're going to master this whole thing. So just watch the steps of what I'm going to do. So in mastering, all kinds of things can be done. Okay. He can put meters on. Okay. So let me tell you what I like to do in mastering. Okay. So one of the things I like to do is I like to put a meter on. And say, uh, let's see, level meter is fine. You can put a level meter on. Just so you can see where you're picking up, okay? The idea is whatever you do, try not to go above 20, um, zero. That's all I will say for now. Try not to go above zero. That's the idea, okay? So, set, put on your, that. In mastering, let me tell you the chain that I like to use. The chain that I like to use is put on some gain, 
EQ if needed, if needed some more. If not, just put on some gain. Add some dynamics if you need it. Um, um, what else? Um, add some warmth, some warmth, warmth. Okay, my name Imunyede. Okay, warm. Make it warm a little bit. Okay, then I would say add on your limiter. Maybe your limiter before you keep it warm. Then add a little bit more compression. And that should get you a good master. Okay? So let's do a simple thing here. So I'm just going to kind of do it. At the same time, it's good to keep your... You can have all these on, but also it's good to look at these bars also. Okay? very important realize i put on some type of umph you you saw that <laughs> okay you saw that right so one more Most important thing is you have to understand how these plugins work. You can't just do it and move things randomly, okay? So be careful in mastering. In mastering, be careful. Already, see, we are going in the reds, but the limiter is going to take care of that, so don't worry, all right? If you feel like it needs to get a bit louder, you can set it anywhere between here. But for what I'm shooting for, I don't need it. I may even need it lower, so it's fine. All right, so at this point, that is just a little bit of gain, um, you know, a little bit of gain to kind of start, get us started, okay? Then, of course, like I said, if you need, if you need to do any kind of type of EQ, one of the ones I like to use is this one. You could use it to control, uh, actually, not this year. Let's use the VEQ because that will help me to control certain dynamics that I want to control. So let's say VEQ, let's try the four. Okay. I barely ever use this one, but sometimes I do. And keep in mind, the chain is getting thicker. So whatever you don't need, take it off and keep it clean. All right. The mastering chain. This is what is called mastering chain. All right. So let's look at it. So with this, this is where you can control certain frequencies. Just watch. I'm going to just do random things and watch, watch what you're going to see. But I'm not going to keep those. But just watch. You realize the highness in it, so.
without with this thing I've done, it sounds like this. This is without it. This is with it. I'm going to do with and without so you can see it easily. With and without. Just hear it. With and without. This is with it, with it, with it, with it. say we like that we keep it but keep in keep in check of something what are the things we are looking for we are, want to make sure this is not passing zero right but also watch what's going on here bad bad numbers okay but don't worry we're gonna fix it don't worry <laughs> So if you go to your limiters, um, there's all kinds of limiters you could use, okay? I like to, some people don't like multi-band compression. Um, for me, I don't have any problem with it based on what song I'm doing. For the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to just go ahead and use one of those. So let's use the, uh, let's see, let me see the L3 real quick. L3, no, 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 no. I don't want to use this. So you gotta just pick the best limiter um, that fits your song, okay? So it's not just, don't just pick anything random. Pick the best limiter for your song. Yeah, this one is a good one, okay? L3 Maximizer here, that's a good one. Um, I'm gonna go for the L16, whatever. Um, where is that at, come on. Um, the L16, there you go. I'm gonna go for yeah, I'm going to go for that, for this mix. Let me go for the L16 for, for this mix, okay? So watch what the limiter does, okay? So watch, realize something. You realize that we are picking at four negative um, 4.6, which is kind of bad. The limiter is going to limit it to whatever you set. If you set your output ceiling to zero, it's going to limit it to zero. Meaning whenever it hits zero, everything is going to get pushed down. It won't let anything pass it, okay? So that's what that is, and then your threshold will will set the, the loudness of it, okay? So the more you come further down, the louder it's gonna get, okay? So when it hits zero, this threshold is gonna react. Zero, react, okay? So that's kind of how that works, okay? As far as these settings here, you could decide to turn it all off, um, none, none, none and none if you want. If you don't want any shaping, that is when the song goes like, if, if there's any silent, it goes like, Okay, that noise. Okay, if you don't like it, just, just turn these off, okay? Because it's going to help control that, okay? And that is the IDR. The moment you turn it on, it's, it lights on, okay? Or normal, okay? So for now, uh, you could leave it both off for now for this limiter. And just watch what the limiter does, okay? It's going to make it louder. At the same time, it's going to control that peak so that it doesn't go bad. So while we are using the limiter, let's keep an eye on all the other ones we are doing. That way we can control certain parameters that we might not be happy with, okay? So these are all that we have loaded. We have the level, we have the CLA2, we have the VEQ, and then we have the L3, okay? So let's go ahead and, 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 and work on the um, I said L3, um, L316, okay? So let's go ahead and bring that in and let's see how. And watch all the levels. Oh, actually, I blocked something. Sorry, guys. We cannot block We cannot block these bars because we have to be able to see everything. So, yes, there you go. So, here. So keep an eye on this number here. Keep an eye on what we are watching for here. At the same time, keep an eye on this region here. Here, keep an eye on this region here. Okay, watch what happens if it starts getting bad. And then here, just keep an eye on what's going on here. 
Okay? And we're going to be watching for all these things. Okay? You can't just watch for one thing. Watch for all those things. Okay? So let's go. So the first thing is we are going to limit it to zero so that we can see how it sounds anyways and then bring it up and then we can so first things first let's set the output ceiling to zero clean it up to the level we want and then do the tweaks we need if we need to lower certain things to get it clean as possible whatever we have to do okay then we're going to make it a bit warm and then i think from there we should have a good mix okay so let's let's check that out <laughs> is that this limiter change the sound of the whole thing right that is okay if you understand multi-band compression i don't want to get into multi-band compression um <laughs> that is another topic for another day so for now let's use l2 to keep things simple yes let's use l2 it, it does the same thing i'll put here and then we bring it out let's use that to keep things very simple <laughs> seeing the number zero is it's, it's never hitting zero okay now i lowered it just to get certain things look at <laughs> we are hearing a lot of the lows right so there's ways we can control it if we feel like we need to use the multi-band compression to do that or use maybe a regular equalizer to kind of just clean that up a little bit so the way we'll do it is this way so watch what i'm gonna do <laughs>
know like the pad is too loud for you, which for me, in mixing, this, this la the pads are louder for me. What you would have to do is you have to go back to the mix and lower it a little bit, then, then bounce it out again, come back, and then continue. Okay? All right. So the pads is a little bit too strong for my taste. Um, that's why I'm talking about that. Okay? So let's add a little bit of warmth to it at this point. Let's add a little bit of warmth with maybe a tape. Um, let's see, crema pie tape. I think I like that. Let's see. No, 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 no not crema pie. A crema tape. Uh, come on. Okay, crema tape. There you go. So let's use this one to warm it a little bit. We're going to just lower it, take all the others off, and then hear how the crema sounds like. <laughs> If you don't know how to use a crema tape, just use a preset that works for you, which is what I'm going to do because I don't want to spend time trying to clean it up as best as possible. But the whole idea of how a crema tape works is um, basically you are going to try and see the speed and then BI, um, the bias um, and over and normal um, tweaks to see which one best fit your song, okay, to add a little bit of warmth, warmth to it, okay. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and just use a preset to make it quicker. All right. So you guys probably don't realize, but I'm hearing already, it's making it very warm. Without it, this is how it sounds. With it, it sounds like this. All right, so that is very warm for me. So for me, for me, I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna reverse it and then put my um, L2 last. So now let's see everything all together. So everything without mastering. This is the track without mastering. This is how it sounds. This is the track unmastered. Okay. Okay, that is the track unmastered. It's not mastered yet. Alright, and then here is the mastered. I'm just gonna turn on all the plugins so that way you hear the mastered version. One of the things we realized is the VEQ kind of did a lot of damage to the original sound. Okay, without the VEQ, it sounds like this. When I bring the VEQ in, listen to it. So I'm only using the VEQ to make it sound a bit thicker. So that's kind of why I did that. Um, I did it that, that effect. Um, so again, be careful how you, are, um, how you are using it, okay? Be very, very, very careful how you are using it. Of course, if you don't know how to do it, always there are presets. Go ahead and learn how to use um, those presets, okay? But I'll tell you learn how to work these, okay? The way it works is, this from here to here deals with more of the low ends, okay? And then this right here, no, sorry. This two here deals with more of the low ends. This two here deals with more of the low frequencies, uh, sorry, mid frequencies, okay? And then this right here deals with the high frequencies, okay? So you have to just understand how it works and, you know, mess with some of the tweaks and see what best fits you okay i don't have time to do all that so that's why i made a very simple tweak okay so we see that the vq is really what is changing the sound because keep in mind 
I'm going to let it all play. I'm going to put all of it without the VEQ and watch it. It will almost play almost the same sound. So watch. <laughs> the same sound the only thing that changed was the the kramer the kramer warmed it a little bit i don't know if you guys can hear with your ears but i can it warms it a little bit okay and then the vq on happy with what we have we can go ahead and bounce it out and send give it to our artists that hey we got you a mix and um, a mastered track so the way you master the track is this pay attention to the side go to file go to bounce and then bounce it out always i would say bounce in mp3 and wave so let's work with wave pcm set it to wave okay now instead of 24 this is your final work make it 16 Please remember, please remember, 16 bit for your final master. 16, 1, 6, 16, 16, 16, 16 bit for your final master. Don't you dare ever do anything else other than 16. Please, 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 please. All right. So for your final master, for your wave, make it 16. And then your sample rate, keep it there. And then um, that's about it. Then your MP3. Just get it to the highest, um, the highest number as possible um, for the um, bit rate settings. Um, quality highest, that's good. And then keep everything else the same. All right. That's what I'll tell you to do for your final master. Okay. So that way you can have an MP3 version and a wave version for different purposes that you may needed for okay so for the purpose of what we're doing i'm gonna just keep it in wave and keep it in 16 and then just bounce it like that it won't make any difference um and then we're gonna call this one master okay so this is a master track it's gonna master and then once it's done boom it's done now there's another process that i didn't really talk about okay if you want to kind of do a process that will help on mono devices. Another thing I can tell you to consider doing is do one bus send, okay? This is a trick that I, um, not everybody knows, but let me teach you. Do one bus send. Instead of making the bus a stereo, make it a mono. Click on it to make it a mono, okay? And then on that bus, put on another type of limiter, maybe the L1 limiter, and make it mono, and then and then mix it in, okay? So the way you mix it in is you can send a little bit of the feed. Um, so let, let's play it and hear it. If I do it that way, then I have to, of course, tweak all these so my number can stay locked and deadlocked on zero, okay? Um, like I said, there's a lot of things for you to understand about mastering, okay? So this is something that you could, you could work on 
So let me show you what I just did. What I did is for mono devices, okay? So things that don't play in stereo, okay? So let me show you an, an example of that. You see, that is playing stereo, not, I'm sorry, mono, not stereo. So what are you hearing? That's called stereo, uh, mono. So you mix it in a little bit so that it can be good on mono devices, okay? But don't let it come and affect the mix, right? So you mix it in a little bit, mix it in a little bit. Okay, mix it in a little bit. All right, then of course, of course you gotta work on your limiter okay you might need to use a different limiter because you are doing this you might need you might say okay let me use a different limiter maybe let me try one of the multi um uh, multi-band limiters maybe the ultra or the um l3 okay this one is not bad so maybe you want to try that <laughs> kind of peaking it tells you that your mix is not really good it tells you that the mastering is not good so you gotta tweak all those until it can it can really work okay so let's tweak those At this point, you tweak it. You see, it's not in the reds anymore. Tweak it to the best of your ability. Get it to the best place, okay? And then that will also be good. All right, so at this point, I don't really want to spend too much time talking about this. So at this point, we've learned how to um, program, mix, and master. So let's hear our mix and let's hear our master. So we can see the difference between the mix and then the difference between the master, okay? So this is our master. And this is our mix. So let's hear the difference. Okay. So our master is at the bottom. Our mix is at the top. Let's play all one time, one time. So let's hear our mix. How did it sound? All right. Obviously, the mix, um, the 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 mix is a bit softer, right? So now let's hear our master. How does that sound? Actually, let's play the mix. Then we'll play the master into it, so you can hear the difference easier. You realize how that one just came right in your face like boom. They said the auto bomb no. Slow. So that one is a master. Now listen to the mix. Master. mix master 
master. Mix. Master. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys here. I'm going to see if there are any questions. If there are no questions, I'll play the music one time, and then we'll be out. All right, so let's check Facebook on L4C. Let's see if we have any questions there. Okay, Malam Fona no Mohajan on. Okay, cool. Um, Mr. SZ said, I need address, sir. Um, yes, sir, you can inbox me and I'll be able to talk with you. I don't know if you are um, in U.S., but we are based in U.S. However, we have engineers in Ghana. Um, I don't know what part of the world you are on, um, but we have engineers in Ghana that I'm sure they will be great of great help in case you are in Ghana. Um, uh, we are in the U.S. Um, let's check on the other KMTV. Do we have any questions there? Okay, KMTV. Okay, hip-hop musician from Dansoman. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just trying to take questions. I'm not reading comments. Comments are a lot, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about questions. So let's see. Questions? No questions. Let's check our YouTube. Do we have any questions on YouTube? No questions on YouTube. Great. So that means a lot of you guys were able to, you know, follow with follow along with me easily. That's very good. Oh, no, 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 no. I might have a question here. Let me check my regular Facebook. Stein KB Usu. Stein KB Usu. Let's see. Powerful, powerful, powerful. No. Okay, so that's a comment. I want questions. Okay. So no questions. Great. Great, 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 great. Okay, great. No questions. So that will do it, guys. Um, I hope you guys have been blessed. Let's play the master. Um, let's play the master one one time through for 40 seconds and then um let's uh, actually let's do this. Let's play the mix um mix one for mix one for the whole 40 minutes and then the master for the whole 40 minutes, then I'll leave you. Okay? So here is the mix one. Before I let you go, let me also ch let, let me do this right now before I forget. Before I forget, let me let, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and do this. So you realize that we just did a mix and a master, right? So one of the things you could always do is if you really care about your artists, okay? If you really 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 care about your artists, you should probably import it back into your project, okay? So that you can see the work you did. This is the mixed version and this is the mastered version, okay? Um, the point to why I'm saying this is when you bring it in, come and see where they are peeking at. Your mix is peaking at negative uh, negative 3.9, which is perfect, exactly where I like it to be. 4, 3, 2. Okay, let's hear our master. Where is that peaking at? It's at zero. The moment it goes over zero, you have a bad mix in. It shouldn't go over zero. Perfect. Because we have limited it to zero. So it shouldn't pass that. If it passes zero, it's bad. Okay? So it tells you that, hey, I got, I had a great mix in. Mix in okay? So now let's listen to our mix and then our master. Then I'll let you go, okay?
All right, finally, our master, Dan, this is it. All right, sorry guys. So this whole time I was playing it and I didn't get any, we can't hear, we can't hear. So let me fix that. I have my sound set to the door. I would have to add my, let's see. Um, I would have to add my built-in. So let me see. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I know why. Okay, so I didn't add my my quick time. That's what it is. That's what it is. There you go. Um. I'm 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 listening to it. I'm like, okay, you guys can't even hear me. Quick time. There you go. So now, when I play, it should come. There you go. Perfect. So we're going to do this all over. We're going to play the mix first. Then we're going to play the master first, okay? So let's hear the, the, um, the mix, the mix one, okay? We're going to do mix first, okay? Here we go. Finally, 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 our master product, which is our final product that goes to the market. Okay, this is what it is. All right, guys, if you guys don't hear my voice again, God bless you for taking the time to join me here in the studio. Um, it has been a blessing. Um, once again, we're trying to just help people um, with our resources. And this is one of the gifts that we have is um, the gift of music. And we just want to be a blessing unto people. So if you are interested in learning how to program, how to become a musician, you want to learn how to play the piano, how to sing, how to anything, how to be a, a, a sound engineer, a music programmer, anything, reach out to us and let's talk, okay? All right. How to even set up a studio, how to step, set up a radio station, how to sev set up a TV station, reach out to us and let's talk, okay? All right. Let's listen to the master product, which is the final, and I'll be out of your way. Alrighty. 